Welcome to Join PIX webinar today. Previously, my colleague Dan has introduced PIX Studio 8.5 new features. Today, it is my pleasure to show you more details related to setup quantification analysis in 8.5. In this new release, we made some big changes to SALAC quantification. First, we further improved detection of SALAC feature pairs and the calculation of quality scores, thus increasing SALAC quantification accuracy and sensitivity. Secondly, we added SALAC peptide ID transfers between different MySpec runs, so that after alignment, the SALAC pair can be quantified if it is identified in one MySpec run. Thirdly, the new design of SALAC Q allows more flexible experimental setting that is SALAC ratio focused, and certain statistical tools are integrated to help data analysis. Three case studies will be shown to demonstrate how Peak Studio can help you with your SALAC data analysis. The first example is to identify proteins that are consistently changed between labeling channels, for example, heavy and light labeling states across multiple replicates, which we call a single group SALAC data analysis in PIGS. The second case aims to find whether the SALAC ratios change between multiple groups. Let's say you have drug treated cells and control cells, and you want to know at different time points after drug treatment whether and how the protein levels change between the treated versus control groups, or if you study protein turnover rate over time, or a super SALAC data analysis, and etc. The third one is a modification profiling study by using the SALAC method. Lastly, I will do a quick step-by-step -step SALAC data analysis, from creating a new project to set up SALAC queue in the Studio 8.5 software. So first, I will start with some SALAC data analysis basics with PIXQ. Here, we are looking at a SALAC threeplex data. The proteins were labeled with arginine light, arginine 6, and arginine 10, and then combined. These three individual features are associated as a SALAC pair based on first, they are of the same charge, which we can tell from the isotopic distribution. And secondly, whether these feature peaks share similar MS1 peak intensity profile over the retention time. And lastly, if they fall within expected mass shifts due to the labeling and are within certain mass errors. Therefore, the higher quality score, the more quantifiable peptide is. Below, I'm going to show you three SALAC feature pairs assigned with high, medium, and low quality scores. The first feature pair has a quality score of 95, which is a good example. You can tell from this figure that this pair has relatively high intensities, similar elution profile. The quality score calculation also considers mass difference, isotopic distribution, and retention time difference. So the second example has a quality score of 75. You can see that the intensities are not very high, and the XIC shape is not so good. The last one has a quality score of 46. The XIC looks even worse. So then you may wonder if there is a quality score threshold that you can set to filter out bad select feature pairs like the last one that's not using them for quantification. So yes, we do have this filter on the quantification results summary page. Here, you can click the edit button to open the feature vector filters. Then you can set the quality score cutoff here. The range of the score is from 45 to 100, and we recommend our users to set the cutoff at 50. By using the improved SALAC feature pair detection, we analyzed a SALAC dataset that had heavy and light peptides mixed at known ratios marked by these dashed green lines, and compared PIX results to MassQuant results. As shown in this figure, 
peaks gave static ratios that were even closer to the expected log 2 ratios at 2 compared to the max quant. Next, I'm going to talk about peptide ID transfers to handle missing value issues. Like I introduced before, PIXQ can detect and associate two or three plaque SALAC feature pairs that have the same charge, similar MS1 peak intensity profile over the retention time, and uh, expected mass shifts caused by labeling, and fall within certain mass errors. So if an identification is obtained from one of the labeling states, then the whole SALAC pair can be quantified and used for peptide and protein ratio calculations. For example, the light form of this peptide GLGDCLVK was fragmented and identified in sample R2. Although no MS2 spectrum was obtained from the lysine 8 labeled heavy counterpart, the SALAC pair could still be quantified in peaks as highlighted in the feature vector table. The ID count column indicates the number of MS2 identified for each select pair. In addition to this, in Studio 8.5, the peptide IDs can be transferred from a different mastite run after alignment. For instance, in sample R1, there was no MS2 on either heavy or light form of this select pair, which has a good quality score. In order to retrieve the identification information, the retention times of different LCMS runs are first aligned, and then MS2 IDs can be matched from another run, for this case, sample R2 run, by aligning select features within tight mass ranges and retention times, thus allowing quantification of select pairs without any ID. And you can tell from which run we transfer the ID by looking at the columns like mass over charge, charge, the PPM retention time, and the minus 10 log P columns, since these contents will be transferred from the matching run. From here, I'm going to show you three examples of how to use PIXQ to analyze complex SALAC data using some published data sets. So the first study is to identify proteins that showed consistent expression changes between labeling channels across replicates. The second study is to see how select ratios differ between multiple groups, like a time series profiling study or super select data analysis. The third study focused on PTM profiling analysis. So before we uh, go to see these specific cases, I would like to first emphasize that in 8.5, the SALAC Q result is ratio focused. And I'm going to explain this in the next two slides. First, we use the median of peptide ratios to calculate protein ratios. So let's look at this simple case first, where there is only one sample, which is the R1 in the group one. So for this protein, there are four supporting peptides. When you mouse over the heat map here, you can see the peptide area in control and treated samples, respectively. This star here indicates that the control sample is specified as the reference, so that the ratio is calculated by using 1.2 E9 divided by 3.2 E8. And the peptide ratio is also shown in the group one ratio column. So when calculating this protein's ratio, we are taking the median of the supporting peptide SALAC ratios so that you get 3.76 for the group one protein ratio. And when you have multiple samples in one group, like here, you have R1, R2, R21, in the group one. So this protein's ratio in group one then will be calculated from the median of the select ratios in these three replicates, and then shown in the group one protein ratio column. Okay, now we are ready to go to see the real three case studies. 
The first case is a typical we call single group select data analysis. For this case, usually you have control and treated samples labeled with select light and heavy medium respectively. And you perform two or more repeats in order to identify proteins that show different abundance levels between the control and treated samples. And also this fold change is quite consistent across your technical replicates. For this scenario, we used a data from this published paper. So the other studied angiotensin II or ANG2 regulated proteomes in kidney cells. The human primary renal cells were either cultured in regular medium or in the cell like heavy medium. After six passages, the ANG2 was added to one cell population, and the proteins of the treated and control cells were extracted and mixed at one-to-one -one protein ratio. In total, four technical replicates were performed, and one of them, um, having the cells growing in the regular medium, were actually treated with the ANG2. According to this design, here is how I set up the experimental settings in PIC Studio 8.5. So two conditions are specified here as the control and treated. Then in the sample 1, 2, 3, the light signal is from the control and the heavy signal from the treated. Whereas in the sample 4, the two conditions swapped. And control condition is specified as the reference condition so that the select ratios of the treated relative to the control are actually calculated for peptides and proteins. Since the same amount of light and heavy proteins were mixed, auto-normalization was first performed in PIX2 so that the total light and heavy intensities in each sample were equivalent. The adjusted normalization factor is displayed for each sample in the normalization setting window. So the normalized intensities are calculated from the raw intensities divided by the normalization factor. In order to identify proteins that have significant changes between the treated and control conditions across samples in this one group, the pair T test is integrated for the significance test. Here in the summary page, it shows that for one group select data, you are using the paired t-test method. And the significance score is calculated as minus 10 times log of the paired t-test p-value. In the protein filters, you can set the significance score higher than 13, which equals a t-test p-value smaller than 0 0.05. Furthermore, you can require a fold change or the group ratio between two conditions higher than a number, for example, 1.5 here, to get a smaller list of proteins that have significant differential expressions between the two conditions. So we hope that this new design can help you analyze your cell data more easily. The second scenario is called a multi-group cell data analysis. For this case, Usually you are trying to assess whether the protein ratios between different labeling states change across multiple groups. In this published work, the major goal was to identify signature proteins that could differentiate two major subtypes, ADC and SCC, of lung cancers. So four lung cancer patient tumors were injected into four mice, and the light proteins from the xenografts were analyzed by using the so-called supercellic approach. Since patient tumors cannot be labeled, a few lung cancer cell lines were labeled by R10 K8 cellic medium, and the heavy proteins from these cell lines were combined as the supercellic standard, which was spiked into each xenograft sample at one-to-one -one protein ratio, then analyzed by LCMSMS and three replicates were performed for each tumor. In peak setting, I put two groups. One is the ADC group that includes 
three of the ADC, ADC1 samples and three of the ADC2 samples. And the second group is the ICC group that has three of the ICC1 tumors and three of the ICC2 tumors. And the light signal is from the tumor and the heavy from the standard. So by having this super -like standard as a constant reference, proteins from the tumors are actually normalized by the standard. And what we try to get is the proteins having ratios different between the ADC and the ICC group. So for this multi-group SALAC data, the PICS provides vouch ANOVA test method by default. This method tests whether the protein ratios in one group is significantly different from the other groups. You can use either the ANOVA test p-values or use a BH-adjusted p-value cutoff. Here, the fold change means the fold change between two group ratios. So here you see, after we applied a fold change of four between the ADC and the ICC group, and then require a FDR um, below 1%, we have a shorter list of proteins that show significant changes between the ADC and ICC groups. The last case study focuses on PTM profiling analysis between samples or across groups. So the demo data aim to map kinase activation state of an oncogenic tyrosine kinase BCR able in leukemia cells. This fusion protein has two major isoforms, P210 and P190. And P190 is 25% shorter than P210 due to a lack of a, P, a, a DH pH domain unit. Otherwise, they have an identical sequence and domain organization. So the author put human P210 and P190 into a mouse pro B cell line and then group control P210 and P190 cell lines in cell like light, medium, and heavy medium, uh, respectively. Then they combined three populations of cells, digested proteins to peptides, and enriched four phosphopeptides and then analyze the data by using lcms -MS. So two experiments were performed, each with two technical replicates. And particularly in the second experiment, the labeling conditions for P210 and P1090, uh, for P210 and P190 swap. So this is how I set up the pips queue accordingly. Three conditions are specified here as control P110 and P190, and each group includes two repeats. In experiment two, the medium channel is for uh, P110, uh, P190, and the heavy channel is for P210. By clicking this new project button, you can start uploading your data and then start the analysis. So from here, I will use the three technical replicates for one group analysis case study. So here you first uh, choose the three technical replicates raw data and then add it to your project. So you create one sample for each of the raw data here. And the experiment was performed by using and, uh, trypsin digestion and then using the OBLB mass spectrometer and HCD fragmentation method. So in the data refinement page, usually you don't have to uh, change anything here. You can just use our default setting. In the identification setup, because this, um, this measurement was done in the Q-executive mass spectrometer, so we have pretty small precursor mass error tolerance and the fragment error mass tolerance here. And the heavy proteins were labeled with lysine 8 and arginine 10. So in the variable PTMs, we put these two static labeling states here and some of the common modifications that would happen during your sample preparation. And we use the Swiss Pro Human Canonical Sequence Database for the database search. And then in the quantification setup, you choose the precursor iron quantification for SELEC. In the methods, we have a default SELEC 2 
with RGN10 and lysine 8. So you just need to select this uh, default method. And then the retention time range is actually for uh, the static pair association. So usually the static pair uh, peptides would, uh, would come at roughly the same retention time. So here we usually give a pretty small uh, number. And then this is for one group data analysis. So here you can drag the three samples into one group. And then hit the finish button and then let the uh, studio run. So it will take a while and I'm just going to show you how it looks like when the Q result is generated. So here is the three replicates data Q result. I'm going to open this Q result node. Okay, so now you see for this experiment you set it up as one group shown in the summary page top in the experiment setting. Here you can review your experimental setting. Here we have three replicates in one group. And the control condition is specified as the reference. In the normalization button, you can choose to use our auto normalization, which assumes that the light and the heavy channels have the same one-to-one -one ratios for all of your samples. And then the feature vector filter, like I uh, introduced before in the slides, if you wanted to use the features without any ID for quantification, then you need to drop this number to zero. And to use the, uh, the, uh, to use the select features with high quality scores, you can set this quality score cutoff at 50. In the protein filter, if by default, when you first open up your select Q result, it will say that the significant score cutoff is zero and the fold change is one. So that by this setting, you will be able to get a full list of quantifiable proteins from your data set. However, if you wanted to identify the proteins that are significantly changed between uh, your treated and control samples across your technical replicates, what you need to do is to set up this uh, significance score. For example, if I give it 20, then it means uh, this protein sh uh, should pass the pair t-test significance p-value smaller than 0 0.01. And then you require that this protein expression levels have to change at least twofold between the treated and control samples. And then you click the apply. So what you end up with is a smaller protein list. So you see these proteins, for example, the top one, it is upregulated in your treated samples compared to the control, and it showed the same fold change trend across your technical replicates. Or you can also identify proteins that are downregulated in your treated samples compared to the control samples. And then this trend is the same for the 302 technical replicates. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, what we are prepared to show you for the salad quantification with Studio 8.5. So before we end this meeting, I just wanted to uh, let you know that where you can find the three application nodes for the single group, multiple groups, and the PTM profiling analysis that I used in my slide. So here in our uh, bioinfo.com homepage, there is a help and support tag. And then under the notes, we have a quantification algorithms page that uh, explains the SALAC pair feature detection and the quality score, and how we do the SALAC alignment and the ID transfer, like I explained before. And uh, why we integrate the paired t-test for single group analysis, and why we use the vouch ANOVA for multiple group comparison. And then specifically under the help and support note select quantification, you can see that we have uh, two application notes ready, which is the single group and then the multiple group. So by clicking each of these application notes, you will have or more uh, details of the case study or the published data set that we used.
to demonstrate how to perform the single group or multiple group data analysis in Studio 8.5. And also, you can download this application note as a PDF file. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, uh, the webinar. So if you have any question, just feel free to tap in the chat window or send us an email, uh, and then we'll get back to you.